now 9 a.m. and time to convene the Tulare County Planning Commission meeting for March 22nd, 2023. Can I have roll call, please? <clears throat> McElroy is absent. Millie? Here. Brown? Here. Diaz? Here. Villach is absent. Commissioner Lehman is also absent. He had noticed us he would be absent. Aguilar? Here. Aleman? Here. All right. We got enough to do business? <laughs> All right. At this time, let's uh, stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on to item two, which is the public comment. Uh, at this time, members of the public may comment on any items not appearing on the agenda. Under state law, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited to the discretion of the Chair. Note, in order to con be considered by the Planning Commission, testimony on public hearing items must be given at the time scheduled for the public hearing. At all times, please use your microphone and state your name and address for the record. Is there anybody that would like to uh, make comments on anything not on the agenda here today? Looks like we have a, too big of an audience. <laughs> all right, we'll move on to item three. This is the parcel map public hearings. The <clears throat> action on all parcel maps in this section of the agenda will be heard in one public hearing unless anyone wishes to discuss any one of these items requests that it be pulled for a separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any of the items unless requested. In any case, there will be a separate vote on these items. Any, anybody need to pull any of these? So uh, we'll open up the public testimony portion on the, on the parcel maps. Anybody would like to comment on any of these? Seeing none, we'll close the public testimony portion and come back to the commission. Uh, 3A is a tentative parcel map number PPM 22-036. Thomas E. Chris and Christine E. Hornberg. Neil Zirnberg is a land surveyor. Um, this is Gil Aguilar. I make a motion to approve categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15315, Class 15, pertaining to minor land divisions in urbanized areas and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM 22-036. This is Commissioner Brown, second. Uh, vote, please. No one like to vote? Oh, okay. Where well, would you like to vote? I can manually vote for you. Got it yet, Carl? Okay. Okay, looks like, uh, oh yeah, all the votes are in. We have um, uh, motions passed, five yes, zero no, uh, two abstentions. Two absence. Absence. Two absence. Oh, I read, I misread that, didn't I? Two absence. Sorry about that. Sorry, Thank you, Gil, for correcting me on that. Uh, let the record show that uh, Commissioner Whitlatch is present at this time. I'm not here, he's present. <laughs> okay, item uh, 3B is a tentative parcel map number PPM 
Wayne Millings, I'll make a motion we approve categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA and state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14 California Code Regulations Section 15303, Class 3, pertaining to new construction or conversion of small uh, structures and conditionally approve tentative parcel map number PPM 23-008. Commissioner Alamon, I uh, second. Please vote. Okay, we got uh, motion has passed. Six yes, zero no, and one absent. Okay, let's see. That was D. Item, item four is uh, continued parcel map public hearings. Action on all parcel maps in this section of the agenda will be heard in one public hearing unless anyone wishes to discuss any one of these items. <coughs> request that it be pulled for separate public hearing. No staff presentation will be given on any of these items unless requested. In any case, there will be a separate vote on each one. So even on these... about this project and I think uh, they've been resolved since then uh, so the neighbor nor the uh, agent showed up today oh, okay well we'll, um, we'll try to open up the public testimony portion of it I don't think you closed it I yeah I closed it on the oh yeah I did yeah, yeah this is uh, a yeah, new, just so, this oh, is a new yeah, so open up separate. yeah yes. so we'll open up the public testimony portion this if anybody would like to uh, comment on this uh, item Seeing none, we'll close the public testimony portion and move uh, to staff. Um, uh, to I think the chair, we're not yeah. going to have a presentation, though, right? No, no presentation. Uh, Tim, Tim's gone in ahead of it. Getting ready for the next the one. The next one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll bring it back to the commission. less than 10 acres and conditionally approved tenant parcel map PPM 22-032 and a waiver of final map. Commissioner Alamon, second. Please vote. <clears throat> All right, the motion um, passes. Five yes, zero no, one abstention and one absent. That was an interesting way to get a non-conforming parcel size on that. I like that. You, you take the parcel, you take the 20 out, <laughs> which right. conforms, and then you use your uh, home retention uh, language to cut down the the, uh, the remaining parcel, which it may, creates a non-conforming parcel. Interesting. All right. Yes, we're very creative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. We are... On item five, this is public hearings. To members of the public who wish to participate, you may do so at this time. Uh, the public, at the time the public comment portion of the meeting is open. At this time, please state your name. At yeah, at this time, please state your name and address for the record in order to be heard by everyone in the room. Your statements will go out on a live audio stream and will be included in the audio recording of the meeting. Timers will be set at three minutes. No. So please adhere to the time limit. 5A is uh, zone variance number P, uh, PZV22-057, an attentive parcel map number PPM22-042. Craig Bowser uh, and uh, Ben Mullins is the surveyor. Our contact today is Tim Chi. Go ahead, Mr. Chi. This is Tim, Tim Chi 
with the county's resource management agencies. Uh, before you this morning is a combined application for a zone variance PZV22057 and the tentative parcel map PPM22042, seeking a loans of the division of a 210.7 acre parcel into three parcels. Parcel one, 14.7 acres. Parcel two, 89.5 acres, and the parcel three, 106.5 acres. And uh, a, final parcel a final parcel map uh, will be required. Uh, the subject site is located in the AE40 zone, exclusive agricultural 40 acre minimum. Here's the vicinity map. The proposed parcels lie on the south side of Avenue 176 and on the east side of Road 208. The property is located at 17224 Road 208, Porterville. The APNs are 243-370-006 and 243-360-008. Here are the aerial and the existing zoning maps. The site is located in the rural valley lands plan area with the land use designation of valley agriculture. The subject site is zoned AE40 and is subject to the rural valley lands plan. The county environmental health services division, the county public works engineering division, the county surveyor, the county assessor's office, and the county fire department were sent the consultation uh, request. The site is under the Williamson Act Land Conservation Contract number 3287 and the Agricultural Preserve number 0583. Here's the site plan. And uh, there are four mandatory findings uh, for the uh, zone variance. One, some parcels in the project site vicinity, north, east, west, and the southwest of the site are smaller than 40 acres. Several properties in the vicinity also contain a combination of rural residents and agriculture. Two, the zone variance will not constitute a grant of special privilege inconsistent with the limitations upon other properties in the vicinity because several properties in the area are less than the minimum acreage. Three, the subject property is located in an agricultural zone, AE40, section 97D of the ordinance code pertaining to division of land, allows the division of land in AE40 zone. Four, the use of the property will not change and is consistent with the applicable policies of the Rural, land, rural Valley Lands Plan, and it will not be detrimental to the agricultural viability of the area. The zone variance and the associated tentative parcel map will not change the existing uses. The proposal has met the required findings for approval of the zone variance, and the staff recommends approval of the zone variance. A public notice for the property was mailed to the surrounding property owners and published in the Exeter Sun Gazette with a 10-day public comment period. There were no comments received. And this concludes the staff's report. If anybody has any questions. Questions, anybody? Thank you, Tim. At this point, I'll open up the public comment portion of this meeting. Anybody out there would like to comment on this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public testimony, come back to the commission for 
discussion and or motion? There's uh, looks like two, two motions. Yep, there is. Yep, yep. two okay. motions. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA and the state CEQA guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15301, Class 1 pertaining to the existing facilities and conditionally approved zone variance number PZZ22-057. This is Commissioner Brown, second. All right. Please vote on the first motion. Okay, looks like the first motion has uh, passed. Six yes, zero no, and one absent. Uh, the second motion. This is Gil Aguilar. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve a categorical exemption consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act CEQA and the state CEQA guide, guidelines pursuant to Title 14, California Code Regulation Section 15301, Class 1 pertaining to existing facilities and conditionally approved tentative parcel map number PPM 22-042 with a final parcel map required. And Commissioner Brown, second. Please vote. <clears throat> okay, looks like the second motion has passed. Six, uh, six yes, zero no, one abstention. Absent. <laughs> I did that again, didn't I? I, I keep. Reading that, one is absent. I'm sorry, zero abstentions and one absent. To help me out there. <laughs> Keep us on our toes. Uh, Neil, we're done with yours. We, we denied it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, boy, we're going right through this. Item six yes. is director report. Uh, through the chair, Aaron Bach, uh, planning director with the resource management agency. Um, just uh, give you a little bit of a heads up on, you know, what's going on out there. Um, uh, the, uh, as, as we sit right now, um, we, we are still holding our uh, emergency office um, and CAL FIRE is kind of the point on all of this now. Um, but uh, last night was pretty, pretty quiet. And uh, hopefully it stays that way for the rest of the rest of today. Um, uh, if you heard from the board yesterday uh, with uh, Chief Norman, uh, we've been out in front of a lot of this, um, um, especially with the uh, uh, sheriff's office and the fire department, and now with uh, the state's assistance uh, office of emergency services and uh, um, uh, Cal Fire, uh, what, even more so in front of these things. Um, Really impressed with our building department. Uh, they've been uh, assessing everything that comes our way where it's uh, safe to get into. Um, all the way up, uh, you know, Camp Nelson and uh, Three Rivers and uh, um, uh, some of the roads aren't necessarily open to the public, uh, but with uh, OES's help and uh, uh, Cal Fire's help, we've been able to access some areas, so we've been um, assessing every day so far, uh, which is necessary, uh, ultimately, for FEMA funding. Um, so we made sure to get out get out ahead of this thing and not, not behind it. Um, and then uh, also with um, uh, added support from uh, Ag Commissioner, uh, Ag, uh, especially with the, the dairies and the, the cows, uh, been able to, to help and uh, <coughs> again uh, not necessarily um, totally relying on ourselves uh, the, the farmers have definitely been uh, contributing greatly and uh, helping each other out as well so I'm uh, impressed with the efforts uh, by everybody uh, we, we've been doing a 24 hours at the uh, EOC uh, last night, and we'll probably continue for the next couple of days uh, just to make sure. 
um, did the 24 hour stints uh, last week. So we've been uh, able to uh, <coughs> get people to um, literally stay, you know, uh, day in, day out for the last, uh, last week now. Um, so the um, uh, other aspect uh, I did want to talk a little bit about is um, uh, the irrigation districts, and uh, they're um, been also uh, very much uh, aware, very much uh, trying to um, <coughs> uh, foresee where, where things are going and control them as best as they can. Um, I read an article recently by our, uh, our, our, our own county uh, talking about, you know, that uh, because of the years of drought here, a lot of these systems haven't been stressed, so we didn't know where those, I mean, you can check levees as much as you want to, uh, but unless you're out there uh, and those things are getting stressed and tested, we, we don't know where those uh, potential failures w would occur, but the, uh, the immediacy which we're reacting to everything is uh, phenomenal. Um, a lot of state support, more state support coming in all the time, so um, <clears throat> really doing the best the best we can and maybe even uh, better than uh, most people had thought we'd be able to do in this situation. I mean, uh, fire trucks from other counties that are not coming for fire. Right. <laughs> right, even the uh, OES staff from other counties are, are uh, attending our uh, EOC. So, yeah, it's been a, a I think uh, people are very much aware and uh, very much want to help. So uh, <coughs> I, uh, a lot of the uh, initial uh, in, impact of this is uh, kind of uh, gone, and now it's uh, into the other county, uh, into King. So we'll see where all that goes. But um, And then um, I'm sure we'll support as best we can over there. But uh, we just ask people to uh, um, respect the uh, emergency orders out there, uh, respect the signage, uh, respect the evacuation orders. Um, that's made things a little bit more difficult for us. Um, but I also want to commend our staff. Uh, we have a 24-hour call center uh, through RMA um, for roads. And uh, every day we get new technologies as far as geographic information systems and our ability to track um, what's uh, not passable and what is passable um, is almost immediate. Our um, assessments, damage assessments on the homes are, are uh, real time, you know, with pictures. So, and uh, the, the technology is really helping us uh, greatly here. But yeah, we are staffing uh, our call center 20, 24 hours um, to keep up with what the uh, EOC is doing right now. So, and also we're also making the maps for which roads are closed. So keeping up with that as well. So quite the effort. So Aaron, does, uh, does this lot, the losses and damage that have occurred, does that will help towards our argument for additional storage capacity in the, up in the mountains? Or is this uh, all came down below the dams, huh? From the well, and yeah, the, uh, the un uncontrolled waterways, uh, Yokel, uh, Lewis Creek, um, I haven't heard much from Cottonwood, Sand Creek. Deer Creek? Deer, yeah, Deer Creek, absolutely Deer Creek. Um, those are the ones that are uh, <coughs> traditionally not as heavily in rain, yes, but snow, uh, maybe later. I mean, it was like yeah, the perfect storm. Uh, yeah, the uh, snow melting. So what would be normally six inches of rain uh, coming through Three Rivers is now 12 inches of, of water. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I think it talks a little bit more about um, uh, flood control uh, in general, but uh, as the board was saying yesterday, there's no, <coughs> our systems were made and we had designed or even got out ahead and done basins in certain places, uh, Lewis Creek, where they, they thought they'd be able to control it, but it was just uh, more, more water than could have been projected. But yeah, uh, I'm sure these lessons uh, will, will build upon e each other. And also that I think the, the board said it 
I think it was Mr. Vanderpool who said, you know, that maybe this will catch the, the state and the feds eye now. Um, we tried uh, to get a uh, <coughs> mitigation grant uh, with the Tulare Irrigation District to help uh, build McKay's Point uh, two years ago, $15 million. And we <coughs> were in the running. Uh, it's a competitive grant, and ultimately we didn't make it. Um, but if, uh, <coughs> you know, I think if we had the McKay's Point project being built now where it could hold, you know, hundreds of thousands, uh, potentially of acre feet of water, uh, that would uh, relieve a lot of our, our flood concerns for, because um, that's right at the McKay Point, we were over there, uh, would relieve some of those concerns uh, from uh, <coughs> storage concerns. Um, I think uh, also in, you'll see uh, more detention basins being built. We, uh, <coughs> with the Groundwater Sustainability Agencies, they did uh, and absolutely programmed uh, detention basins into the water balances. <coughs> um, those haven't come to fruition yet. Uh, Prop 68 funding has been made for the designs and everything else, but that's <coughs> a year or two away. So hopefully this uh, starts people thinking about how we can use those detention basins, not so much to reclaim the water, but as flood storage and so, uh, or, or flood control. So I, I think a lot of those things are gonna be in the forefront uh, as we move forward. Because yes, the, the damage amounts on this flood are gonna be pretty big ultimately, and I think that's gonna catch, catch some national attention. There's those that might say that with climate change that we're gonna have more extremes. We might have longer droughts, but we might have a lot wetter uh, winters when it, when it turns. Right, right, and that's, uh, I mean, even like, um, you know, the <coughs> we brought the Matheny tract uh, sewer uh, <coughs> um, grant to the board a few weeks ago, and uh, the Supervisor Valero was ta talking about how long it takes us to go through the State Water Board to get those monies for sewer or East Erosi for water. It, it's <coughs> five years, 10 years, you know, in these detention basins, even three years, four years, five years um, for just digging out a hole is a long time to take to program the funding and get all, all the funding in line. So <coughs> it's the, uh, it's not so much that the, you lose like a brick grant for McKay's point, it's that now you go back in, it takes two to three years to actually get it, and now seven, 10 years to build it. <coughs> so I, I think the, the immediacy of this needs to, needs to be felt at the, the state level, because um, these projects and programs have just taken so long, and it, it happened, you know, 2000, 16 with the, um, before the last rains, uh, with the drought, East Porterville, you know, it, <coughs> they had the attention, the state came down here, it got built, or even before that, we put our, uh, a well in, uh, and that, that money came in fairly quickly, you know, when it, when it absolutely has their attention, so, uh, hopefully this <coughs> stir, stirs up some, uh, grant funds that we can get to fairly quickly, so we can start doing some of these, uh, storm uh, um, flood control projects and uh, hopefully the things that uh, impeded us previously, uh, federal, state agencies, local agencies, or uh, just the, the bureaucracy itself, hopefully that can be maneuvered a little bit more quickly now that we know ultimately, you know, this could happen again next year. Could happen again, in, you know, over the next month, so. Okay, is that it? That's all I got. Okay. Hector, you're all right? Lynn? Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll move to item seven. This is the Planning Commission discussion item and request for future agenda items. Uh, anybody have anything that they'd like staff to research, bring back? No questions? All right. Seeing none, we will adjourn until kind of April 12th, 2023. Stories for my granddaughter.